So thank you so much, Leticia, for your introduction and your invitation, allowing me to conduct this webinar two days. So I hope that everyone can hear me in uh, good manners and you can see my uh, presentations. So good morning and thank you everyone for your participation is, uh, in this webinar. So I think that you are for the moment around 30 attendees. So it's very interesting and impressive. So before to deal with the environmental impact of thermally modified wool material, I just would like to give you some information about my research centers and uh, laboratory. So I've been working at CIRAD Institute for six years now. And the CIRAD is a French agricultural research and international cooperation organization working for the sustainable development of tropical and Mediterranean regions. And as you can see on the right of the slide, the CIRAD is divided into three scientific departments. The first of one is uh, biological systems. The second one is uh, tropical production and processing systems. And the last one is uh, environmental, environment sorry, and societies. And the CIRAD Center counts a total of more than 1,650 people, including the, about 800 uh, researchers. And the CIRAD Center is uh, based in Montpellier in France, but we have a lot of uh, partnerships and uh, regional departments uh, around the world and mainly in the South Hemisphere of the world. Uh, personally, I'm working in the research unit BioWeb, which depends on the department Tropical Production and Processing System from the CIRAD. And BioWeb is the acronym for Biomass, Wood, Energy, and Bioproducts. So we are based in Montpellier in France, but we have many partnerships and research and development projects conducted with a lot of countries from the South Hemisphere of the world. And we are about 40 permanent employees, and we work on full research topics oriented on the biomass valorization and conversion ways of the biomass. So the first topic concerns uh, wood and biomass characterization. The second topic is uh, thermal and thermochemical conversion of wood and biomass for an energy valorization. The third topics concern uh, the elaboration and the characterization of uh, materials and bioproducts uh, based on wood and biomass. And the last one is uh, economic and environmental strategies that are related to the free previous uh, research area. And our research activities are mainly developed with uh, two scientific platforms. So the first one, concerned uh, energy and the second one is for wood based uh, materials and each of these platform is composed by laboratory analysis equipment and laboratory or semi-industrial prototypes. So now we can start to talk about the environmental impact of thermally modified woods. So my presentation of Two days is based on a literature review that we conducted with my colleague Janka Dibiakova from the Nibio Institute in Norway. So we done this review work in 2020. So we performed this review last year. And for your information, a lot of data is issued from the network of the cost section FP1407 called uh, Mod Woodlife that uh, investigating wood modification processes and product design with the emphasis on their environmental impacts. So for firstly, just a quick reminder about the heat treatment process or, uh, of wood. So actually thermal treatment is considered as an eco-friendly process in wood modification sectors. And the objective of such a treatment is to heat the wood material under an inert atmosphere. So mainly industrial use uh, oil, 
fumes, uh, steam, uh, water steam pressure, or inert gases as uh, nitrogen, for example. And the treatment is conduct in order to modify the anatomical and chemical structures of the wood. And several industrial processes are now commercialized around the world, and they use the temperature range compressed between 180 degrees and 240 degrees. And the treatment duration is range between 20 hours and 60 hours. So we, it could be noted that the, these durations include the drying steps of wood during the, the process. So under the heat effect, each wood polymer reacts in a different way. So as seen on the scale on the left of the slide, we can see the temperature range of the degradation of the free polymer of the wood. So the hemicellulose are the most sensitive compounds uh, against heat, whereas the cellulose is the less degraded during uh, its exposure. And in addition to the darker color evolution, thermal treatment undergoes some modification in chemical and anatomical properties of wood. So such as uh, acetic acid formation, degradation of hemicellulose, modification of lignin polymers, increase of cellulose crystallinity. So the, this last modification concerns the chemical properties. And, and overround, we can observe uh, anatomical property change, such as a radical crack, increase of uh, wood porosity, but we don't observe a change in uh, wood uh, cellulose fibril angles. And all of this uh, modification provide uh, to the heat treated wood new technological properties such as uh, a better uh, durability with an uh, improved uh, hydrophobicity and decay resistance of uh, heat treated wood. We can also observe uh, higher dimensional stability and another round concerning the mechanical property, we can observe that it treated wood present a low, a lower bending and tensile uh, strength properties. But we can also observe an increase of the compressive uh, strength of T snaps along the longitudinal direction of it treated wood materials. So the, all of these factors mean that thermally modified wood product can be used in the use class free. So without contact between the heat treated wood material and the ground. And just for your information, if you want uh, more information about uh, thermal modification process and thermal, thermally modified wood uh, properties, you can find uh, many recent data in the book, uh, Wood Modification in Europe. So now we will start to discuss about uh, environmental effects of uh, thermally modified wood products. So firstly, these pictures uh, present a schematic life cycle assessment scenario of uh, thermally modified wood products. So the main goal of my presentation of this morning is to fulfill the existing knowledge gap by providing summary of the environmental impacts of thermal modification of wood, depending on the resource and the industrial processes, service life and the use of treated wood products. And finally, the end of life solution can be uh, considered for thermally modified wood products. So now we will do an overview of the different factors that can have an environmental impact during uh, each steps of the heat treated wood products life cycles. So just for information, we decided to not detail the impact uh, related to the transport and distribution sector during this uh, life cycle assessment. So the first step of one uh, LCE analysis concerns the resource. So the main results of this uh, step is the follow are the following. So thermal modification is a wood modification process allowing to use locally sourced timbers, mainly from certified uh, forest. And thermally modifi modification allowed to valorize uh, low durable wood uh, 
from northern hemisphere or also of tropical wood species. So the thermal modification allowed to valorize the some under valorized uh, wood spaces. And if we manage uh, forest in a good manner, the, this process allowed to, to avoid the resource, uh, biomass resource depletion. So on this table, I just put some, uh, the most of uh, wood spaces can uh, be used by a thermal modification process. So thermal modification process valorize a lot of wood spaces around the world. But uh, if we have a look on the different wood spaces, we can see that uh, we find uh, a lot of wood spaces with uh, fast uh, growing and with uh, low natural durability. The second steps of one LCA concerns uh, the machining and uh, thermal modification processing. So on this uh, picture, we can observe the energy consumption of uh, various modified wood with uh, similar property. So in this uh, study from Andre, uh, each uh, ash thermal wood, spruce thermal wood, uh, imported IP from Brazil and uh, tanalite imprinted wood have uh, similar humidity and similar decay resistance. And uh, as expected, it appears that the energy cost of ash and spruce thermal wood uh, treated are higher than those of uh, imported IP and those of tanalite imprinted spruce. But we can also observe between the, the histogram uh, in blue and uh, orange, we can see that the high energy cost of thermally modified woods are mainly due to the drying steps, whereas uh, the energy cost of the modification, the thermal modification process is lower. Uh, no, we have um, a graph uh, present which presents uh, CO2 emission uh, for different uh, treated wood. So we we find also the ash spruce uh, treated by thermal wood process, IP imported from Brazil, spruce uh, impregnated by a tonalite. So these results are come from the study from uh, Andre. And on the right, the, the free uh, thermally treated wood uh, is, uh, are the results from Brimstone Studies, the Brimstone company, and concerns the ash, sycamore, and poplar uh, it treated wood. And we need to pay attention because uh, drying step from the Brimstone company include uh, uh, additional operation as mining and kindling during the drainage steps. So it's for this reason that we can observe uh, a higher uh, CO2 emission from Brimstone Company than those uh, from uh, Andre studies. And the main observation are the following. So firstly, the CO2 emission of thermotreated wood are higher than those of uh, imported IP and tanalite imprinted wood. And the elevated CO2 emission of thermally modified wood are mainly formed during the drying steps and depend also on the wood spaces. So the CO2 emission is uh, related to the, uh, have the same trend than those of the energy uh, cost. And now another aspect of thermal modification process concerns the emission of gas, uh, volatile and solid uh, compounds generated during the thermal degradation of food. So on this picture, we can see the different uh, chemical compounds family generated by the wood during its thermal degradation. So the main volatile products are acids, phenol, ketones, fluad, and uh, aldehyde, and we can observe also the generation of alcohols, sugar, and esters. And for each chemical compound, it appears that uh, the volatilization level increases according to the heat treatment intensity, except for aldehyde compounds, and aldehyde compounds is mainly due to the lenin polymer uh, reticulation. 
However, the, the most industrial process implement uh, suitable uh, systems to condense and uh, recover a large part of these volatile compounds released during the heat treatment process in order to limit the atmospheric pollution. And as uh, highlighted in these pictures, some valorization ways of these byproducts can be explored. So according to the process systems, we can recover an, uh, in one hand uh, the volatile byproducts, and we can also recover the waste water. The waste water is mainly uh, occurred during uh, thermal wood process that uh, used uh, steam vapor uh, pressure. And in order to the reduce the environmental impact the, and to increase the economic performance of the global modification processes, these byproducts can be valorized in different miners. So for example, you can use uh, alcohol into a bioenergy uh, valorization, organic acid, terpene, and uh, phenolic compounds in uh, wood preservation sectors as uh, for their uh, antifungal and antithermic properties. And finally, we can use also uh, aldehyde, ketone, and furan in wood preservation, but also in uh, food industry. And in another side, we can use the, the waste waiters as uh, coloring chemicals for textile fabrics and the plant growth stimulator are also in pesticide uh, compounds. So now we will discuss about the environmental impact uh, occurring during the setting up and the period of use of uh, thermally modified wood uh, products. So the first one concerns uh, volatile organic compounds during the service life of the, uh, the modified wood products. And we can see on this picture that the volatile compounds emitted during the service life of the products are the same than those generating during the treatment process. And according to this statement, it appears that uh, it treated wood emits uh, lower uh, VOCs content than those of native wood, uh, native wood during their uh, service life. So in addition, we can see for organic acid, aldehyde, and terpene compounds, as well as for uh, global uh, volatile organic compounds, that the more severe the intensity of treatment is, the less uh, VOC content will be emitted from the modified wood during the, the service life of the products. But this uh, volatile organic compounds could have uh, various uh, human and environmental effects. So for example, organic acid can cause uh, corrosion problems. Uh, for example, aldehyde have uh, unpleasant odors, properties with potential uh, toxicity and some irritating uh, compounds. And finally, even if terpene uh, has pleasant odor, they can have uh, an occurs uh, allergic reaction such as uh, irritation of mucous membrane for the human. <clears throat> In the uh, second one, the, during its service life, the modified wood material can be submitted to natural leaching, aging, generating uh, often some chemical products with potential uh, toxic activity. So, for example, I put on this slide uh, a table presenting uh, several results about toxicity activities of water leachate from thermally modified wood against uh, Daphnia magna organism after different leaching laboratory processes. And according to this uh, comparative results, it appears that uh, leachate, water leachates from thermally modified wood are less toxic than those of tropical wood or chemical modified wood. So for example, the toxic units uh, range from two for four uh, concern hardly toxic uh, materials, whereas uh, toxic units higher than uh, 16 are uh, quite toxic. So we can see on this table that Scott, Scott Pine and Beach treated by Plateau process 
have toxic Unix uh, lower than two. Whereas uh, if you look um, untreated uh, tropical wood or CCA treated uh, wood, we have a toxic value higher than uh, 30. So we can see that uh, thermally modified wood leachate have uh, a lower toxicity values than over tropical or chemically modified wood. Um, the following um, aspect concerns the machinability and dust emission. So dust emission occurred during the machinability of untreated and thermally modified wood could cause uh, damages to the environment and the human health, even if they are uh, generally higher than 10 micrometers. And 10 micrometers is the level recommended uh, by the World Health uh, Organization. And we can observe on the graphic that uh, during miling process, so on the graphic on the right, we have a sanding process in uh, pink colors and miling process in, uh, in blue. And uh, according to the color line, you have the different treatment intensity. And we can observe that during miling operation, it treated would generate uh, a higher content of fine particles than those of uh, native wood. And this content of fine particles increase according to the intensity of uh, treatment process. However, we can observe the, the contrary results and we can observe that uh, it treated would emit uh, lower um, fine particle uh, contents with during a sanding process than those uh, generated by untreated wood. So additional attention need to be considered uh, during mesh humidity of thermally modified wood. <clears throat> and the last aspect of the period of use of thermally modified wood concerns the wafering and the maintenance of the modified products. Um, it results that heat treatment does not prevent the natural aging, wafering and gray coloring of the wood during uh, its, uh, its service life. So in this sense, some surface treatment as uh, acid curable and, or waterborne acrylic coating could be highly recommended to limit the heat treated uh, wood uh, wafering and gray coloring. So the uh, such uh, maintenance and uh, surface treatment need to be considered during the life cycle assessment of the thermally modified wood products. <clears throat> the, now, the last step of uh, LC analysis is uh, concerned the end of life. And um, so the possibility of recycling thermal wood, thermal modified wood products need to be considered and promoted publicly. And the decision to recycle thermally modified wood after its service life is based on the chemical composition of the modified wood products. And the modified wood products could be reused in bioethanol production if a content of uh, sugar and carbohydrates is sufficient. And finally, it treated wood can be also converted into pulp and paper industry that's used for cellulose uh, proportion. And finally, the over end of life scenario consider uh, energy conversion or land filing. And thermally modified wood can safely be used as a solid fuel for bioenergy at the end of uh, its service life. In fact, the carbon content and the calorific power of thermally modified wood are generally higher than those of native and untreated wood. However, the wood incineration can cause increased acidification and autorification reaction because we will generate a lot of NOx into acid acidic substance. And in addition, many various types of uh, incineration process 
could be uh, considered as an incineration, gasification, and pyrolysis in order to produce uh, energy uh, vectors. And the last aspect concerns the landfilling, which would offer carbon sequestration at the expense of leaching risk in landfill uh, storage space. Uh, however, the thermal conversion can offer a clean life cycle approach, but still at the expense of uh, carbon sequestration and storage. So now I would like to finish my presentation by the presentation of three LCA scenario conducted on the Tamalai modified wood. So the first of one uh, has been performed on the comparison of environmental performance from uh, untreated, heat treated and uh, organic salt treated wood uh, cladding products. And the main statement of this uh, study is that uh, thermovacuum treated wood cladding damage categories show a better performance than uh, preserved cladding, especially to the human health. The second study of uh, LCA was uh, conducted in order to compare the environmental impact of thermally and acequium modified wood over a period of uh, 20 years. And the uh, it treated wood appeared to have a lower resource, human health and climate change impact compared to landfill uh, acequium treated wood. Uh, at the opposite, we can observe that uh, acequium treated wood performed lower at the water use category mainly because uh, in this case, the heat treatment process use uh, steam, water, uh, steam water pressure. And another result concerns uh, that the thermally modified wood appear to score lower at the stratospheric ozone depletion, fine particle matter formation, terrestrial acidification, uh, terrestrial freshwater and marine ecotoxicity and mineral resource scarcity potential than the acetyl treated wood. And finally, the main reason that contributes to the environmental effect appears to be due to the manufacture of the SEQ preservative for the SEQ treated uh, wood materials, while the combustion of uh, fuel oil needed for thermal modification equipment run was the largest contributor to the impact of the heat treated pine wood. And the last uh, LCA scenario that I will discuss today is uh, a study performed by uh, Brimstone Company. Um, and it is only focused on the greenhouse gas recovers and emissions from it treated uh, poplar, ash, and sycamore woods. And on this graph, we can see that the during the forest growth, a large amount of carbon, carbon is uh, sequestered into the wood material. And secondly, the main uh, CO2 emissions are due to the mining and cleaning steps followed by the thermal modification process. So the CO2 emission is higher during the, the cleaning and drying steps of the wood and uh, than those of uh, thermal modification process. And finally, uh, Brimstone Company considers that the, the end of life scenario include uh, incineration. So if the end of life scenario include incineration, the global CO2 emission of thermally modified wood would be negative for the three different wood spaces. Uh, for this reason is by generating a new a renewable secondary fuel at uh, end of life, additional potential benefits can be achieved by substituting for fossil fuel that would uh, override be used. So as general conclusion, we can say that uh, thermal modification allows to valorize uh, local and low valuable wood spaces, limiting forest depletion. The energy consumption and CO2 emission are mainly produced during the drying strips of the process. And we have a lower uh, 
emission during the thermal modification state, the carbon footprint of thermally modified wood product could be negative if, uh, for example, if incineration or recycling are considered uh, during the end of life of the thermally modified wood products. We have observed toxic uh, VOC uh, generating during the thermal modification process, but a lot of industrial process uh, implement a recovery and valorization solution of these uh, byproducts. Uh, at the opposite, the lifetime VOC emissions are low compared to natural or chemically modified woods. And thermal modification process have uh, also strong potential to produce ecological wooden materials. And now it's still important to identify the potential opportunities to improve production process to reduce the global ecological footprint of thermally modified wood products. And the thermal modification sector should to establish a database on environmental impact in order to support the manufacturers to develop uh, environmental products uh, declarations. So in this slide, I, uh, I give you some uh, the main of some um, scientific articles that we used for this presentation and for the, our uh, literature review papers. So you can find a lot of information in these uh, scientific articles. And to conclude my presentation, I would like to thank again uh, Leticia for her invitation to perform this webinar and uh, in our new institute and all of you for your extensive and attentive uh, participation in this uh, webinar. And now I think that we don't have uh, a lot of time now to discuss together about these uh, topics. So if you want to do it or if you need more information, you are welcome to contact me uh, directly by email or you can join me by my LinkedIn or ResearchGate uh, profile. And all of your questions, comments or suggestions will be welcome. And you can also find uh, all the results of this review study on the following links of this slide with the DOI. And thank you again for your attendance and your participation is with, uh, in this uh, webinars.